and how the technology is used by local papaya farmers. At the beginning of the summit, a panel including Hector Valenzuela, Dennis Gonzales, Richard Ha, and Kamana, Kamana Beamer presented a balanced consideration of the issue. The afternoon session, dominated by overhyped outsiders, was a deception-ridden force feeding that induced a gag reaction in Kamana Beamer, who rose to his feet during the summit, shouting, enough, enough, full-on gag reaction. You should have been there, you should have seen it up to here, okay? So there's a big difference between how Richard and Dennis are discussing this issue and how people from the mainland are trying to force it down their throat. One of the more important deceptions of the day came from a presenter who said there are no naturally occurring varieties of papaya that are resistant to ring spot virus. She is supposedly an expert, but her mind is closed. Our homegrown panelists knew of this variety and even discussed it earlier. So here's what we do. We pass Margaret's bill with some amendment. No exemption for corn. There's gotta be a sunset. Phase it out. Two, total exemption for papaya. It's just, they're here, they've been growing it, it's their livelihood, exemption. Research can continue in the lab, and the task force will be helpful, but after the bill is passed. Let people come together after the bill is passed. Okay, Ms. Kubat, Mr. Shaw, please uh, yes. identify. Push the bar on the base. That's good. Identify yourself and you may continue for two minutes. Hello, my name is Jeff Shaw. I'm a resident in Puma. And um, first of all, I just want to mention that I'm disappointed that people who raise flowers don't do it because of the, the beauty that they represent. Yeah, because that's kind of what I see when I see flowers, but, you know, to each their own. And that kind of gets me to where I'm going to go with this, this discussion is that, um, you know, if you're a farmer, you should be, um, your main concern should be growing food that the people want to eat. And it's been demonstrated in this county and in a wide area that, when, that the reason they don't want to label is because they know that, that that's a death sentence, and people don't want to eat GMO food. It's as simple as that. And if you want to have sustainable agriculture, then the first step is to you know create an environment where the, the farmers and the people are on the same um, you know, on the same path and, and and fulfilling each other's desires. And um, you know I guess stubbornness is a is supposed to be a um, a, a good trade in people, but you know, the, the writing is on the wall for the papaya people already. They're already saying that their sales are going down, and you know, I guess they, they, they blame the, the, the people, you know, saying what they say and stuff, but it's really the, the, um, the, the buyer making that decision. And they don't make that decision based on what I say. They make the, that decision based on what's in their heart. And much of the people's hearts is that, you know, um, that there's a better way to do things and we need to start working on that path and, and uh, you know, getting on the same page and making agriculture work in this county. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Kau, please introduce your testifier. Thank you, Madam uh -huh. Chairwoman. We have Paul A. Cromara, Jr. in support of Bills 109 and 113. Good afternoon, County Council. I've had the opportunity to testify on Bill 79 previously, and I also submitted written testimony. And my concern is that perhaps the County Council just doesn't get it. GMOs are science. They are not natural. Science has also pointed out to us that the science is poisoning us. So I question the validity of GMO foods. 66 nations have decided that they do not want these foods in their countries. 
Hungary is just one example, and I applaud them, since their government wouldn't do the work necessary to remove the foods the farmers did themselves. The point is, again, is this, are we going to protect ourselves, or are we going to protect the corporate world whose business is to make a profit? This lie cannot live forever. It must stop now. I am going to personally hold every council person liable for my death should I be forced to eat GMO foods should I be forced to buy them off of the shelves without knowing that they are there? I thank you for this opportunity of expressing my opinion. Peace be with all of you. Aloha. Thank you, sir. I'm here in Hilo Ross Stubukau. I don't know if I said that right. Jose Soriano. Subukau, am I pronouncing that correctly? Subukau. Subukau, thank you. You go, please go ahead, sir. Identify yourself in the microphone. Hi, aloha, council members of the county of Hawaii. Uh, my name is Ross Subukau. Um, I strongly oppose Bill 109 and 113. Um, I was raised, I was born and raised on this island. Um, I spent um, a lot of my life dedicated to farming, feeding um, people, generating a lot of produce, uh, mainly papayas. Um, today I'm speaking myself as a third generation local farmer. I'm also a small scale farmer of the Hawaii papaya industry. Um, I feel any anti-GMO legislation is going to impact local farmers in a very negative way. Introduction of any kind of bills that target local farmers shows no aloha. The right way to introduce bills is to reach out to us local farmers and ask us how we can um, have a discussion of how we're going to um, improve our agriculture for this island. Um, uh, well, I, I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like to speak too much, but um, I'll be willing to be part of a discussion. So I, I am um, asking you guys to withdraw this bill and work on something more positive. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My apologies. Mr. Soriano, <coughs> are you not here? Okay. Mr. Baldessare? Ms. 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 Yeah. Okay. Kim Kozuma? Kim Kozuna? Oh, she's coming. Okay. Janava? Jonava. Jonava. Please go ahead. Identify yourself into the microphone. Okay, my name is Jonava Baldessari. Um, is it okay if I read a list of names of people who wish they could be here? It's and your two minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, Christopher Walker, Carrie Dickey Clark, Amara Karuna, Tracy Matfin, Rob Long, Dana Willoughby, Anika Willoughby, Prasad Dittman, Donna Fisher, and Ruben Gutschow um, are either in favor of 109 and or 113. Um, I myself am in favor of 109. I would also like to thank um, Margaret Willey for raising this issue and raising the consciousness of so many people, including myself. Um, since this issue has come up, um, when we first came here, we found a papaya grower who said that her papayas were non-GMO, and so we kept purchasing from her. And recently, um, she changed her papayas, and then we got into more dialogue with her, and she said, oh, they're, all the papayas are GMOs. And we went, oh my god, really? 
I don't know that I believe that, but for myself, I'm just eating the papaya that is grown on my Ina, and hopefully those seeds were non-GMO. So I'm sorry to the papaya farmers, but I'm not buying the papayas anymore. Um, I'm also not eating any corn that uh, I used to buy the tortillas, you know, and if it doesn't say non-GMO, I'm not buying them. Um, and soy products, I heard that Pacific um, uh, soy products on this island were non-GMO, but I have to investigate that myself before I eat them. So um, I'm in favor of 109. Thank you very much, both of you courageous, wonderful women. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kozuma? Doctor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Kozuma. Um, I was born and raised in Hawaii. I'm a veterinarian with a BA in biology, livestock producer, and mother of two young girls. The Hawaii County Council has heard repeated testimony from trusted government agencies and the international scientific community state the use of GE technology is safe. None of the scientific research from the outspoken anti-faction has withstood peer review. To ignore this and restrict conventional farming is unwise, to say the least. The true dangers of milder Bill 113 are as follows. One, it effectively removes a powerful tool to respond to future threats to our ag industry. A clear example is the inability to deal with the coffee borer beetle. GE could harden the cherry coat, preventing the beetle from entering, all without the use of pesticides or any other alterations. This is a direct corollary to the precautionary principle. Should these bills pass, this scenario will extend to all of our agricultural industries. Hawaii Island is not a biologic bubble of safety. Invasive species challenge our biodiversity daily. This is a food safety and sustainability issue and has nothing to do with Monsanto. If there is true concern about biodiversity, then get our native plants into a proper seed banking program like the one in Spitsberg in Norway. Two, Bill 113 charges users fees, penalizes and criminalizes conventional farming. This is a seriously disturbing overreach of political activist agendas. Three, with regards to the right to farm law, although the catalyst of urban sprawl initiated its passing, the intent was to protect the rights of farmers to farm, period. The initial threat has shifted in light of the anti-GE attacks on conventional farming. To state the right to farm law has no bearing on these bills is inaccurate at best, negligent at worst. Bill 113 prevents my daughters from entering the Hawaii agricultural industry should they use conventional farming. In closing, I hope my written testimony has given enough facts to the council members who have remained objective on the matter. Please protect our right to farm using science, education, and expertise. Vote no on 109 and 113. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Susan Miyasaka, Donnell Lewis, Donnell Lewis, Miss um, Miyasaka, are you a doctor also? Yes, I'm a doctor. Okay, I'm also. Dr. Miyasaka, you may begin. Thank you. My name is Dr. Susan Miyasaka, and I'm an agronomist at the University of Hawaii. I am providing testimony to you today as a private individual and not as a representative of my college. My testimony is not biased by financial interests because I have not received any research funding from any of the seed companies. Thank you for the opportunity today to testify against Bills 109 and 113. When you have a plumbing problem in your house, you call a plumber. When you have an electrical problem in your house, you call an electrician. When you have a scientific issue in your house, I hope that you call a scientist. I am not saying that I am more intelligent than others, but I have been trained over the past 25 years in the scientific method and in critical evaluation of scientific papers. And just as all plumbers and electricians are not equally competent, the same is true with scientists. Any one scientist can be wrong, but when whole organizations of scientists are saying the same thing, then the likelihood of all of us being wrong is very low. The national and international scientific communities are united in stating that approved, commercialized, genetically engineered crops and foods are as safe as non-GE crops and foods. 
the American Medical Association reported that bioengineered foods have been consumed for close to 20 years and during that time no overt consequences on human health have been reported and or substantiated in the peer-reviewed literature. The American Association for Advancement of Science, the World Health Organization, and the European Union agree that approved GMOs are just as safe as other foods. Please vote no on Bills 109 and 113. They are based on emotional fears with no credible scientific evidence. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Our next speaker, I think it's Donette Lewis, isn't yes, it? Yes. I'm sorry, my I name is Donette Lewis, and I'm a landowner in Eden Rock and a member of Sure Foundation Church in Puna, representing all the moms there. I want to thank you, Ford, for bringing this up. Um, to me, it seems like every farmer is going to come up here and say the same thing, and every person is going to come up here and say they don't want to eat it. Um, it's just, to me, a matter of the almighty and corporate owned government. The GMO and the Roundup Ready crops that we were talking about, the insects eat a piece of the corn, their stomachs explode, and after years of us eating corn cobs, what will that do to us? They are now making GMO, GMO seeds sterile, so they will not be able to hold any more of their seeds back. Um, cancers, food allergies, immune deficiencies are all off the charts due to what we are eating. Please pass 109 and 113 minus the corn. Keep Hawaii GMO free. It's too risky and it has not, not enough tests have been done. Other countries like China and South Korea have now rejected our corn, corn, soy, and cotton seeds from the United States because they know that they are harmful. Other countries have rejected this and put them in their constitutions. We in Hawaii are not their guinea pigs. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Ford. much. Thank you, Willie, for bringing this up. Thank you. Mr. Folks and Nomi Carmona. N Nomi Carmona. Come on up. Mr. Folks, you may begin. Um, please press the, the uh, oh, if the light is on, it's good. Please identify yourself into the microphone. You've got two minutes. Hey, I, I am Olay Folks. Um, you might n remember me as the, the former county councilman who the court stopped from serving. So, um, in, the, in the last round, due to magical thinking, the corn and papaya farmers said that they would be put out of business if they were um, grandfathered in. So I want to thank you, Brenda, for your new idea of helping the, these farmers by not, not grandfathering them in, but instead letting them get into, into growing something delicious, nutritious, and that everybody wants to eat. And I think that about covers what I have to say today. Mahalo, County Council. Thank you, Mr. Folks. Go ahead. Aloha, Madam Chair. Just kidding. Aloha, Madam Chair and Council Members. My name is Nomi Carmona. I've testified before you before, representing our Honolulu-based nonprofit, Babes Against Biotech. We are now at over 10,000 members and subscribers, which is uh, <laughs> mostly in Hawaii, about 90%. I'm also representing GMO Free Maui in support, of course, of 113 and 109. Certainly, I prefer 109. I don't really like the jail time. Um, I think that we could take 113 and cut the corn exemption. I think uh, our organization is fine with exempting the papayas, the papaya farmers are not the problem here. Uh, the restricted use pesticides that are hitting us on Oahu, Molokai, Maui, and Kauai are a huge problem associated with this. And we're a little bit lucky they're so greedy that they want to do this to sell chemicals and engineer our food to sell chemicals because it's exacerbating the damages so we're able to see it more quickly than the genes alone. So animal studies are showing third generation total reproductive failure. Total reproductive failure. We have the right to reproduce. 
and the chemicals that they're exposing us to take away our right to procreate, which I think everybody should feel pretty strongly about. You have 13 climate zones on Hawaii Island. That's a huge kuleana. This is such a unique climate. I think it would be brilliant to have a seed heritage bank. Uh, do I expect that? Not necessarily. I hope we, we must pass at least uh, Council Member Willie's bill. I have over 700 studies on babesagainstbiotech.org about GMOs um, either disproving the fallacies about their safety, which I find it offensive that any scientist would make a blanket statement like every national and international organization has said that GMOs are safe. I can name several off the top of my head, including the American Academy of Environmental Medicine and the Union of Concerned Scientists and the Institute for Responsible Technology, who are completely against AAEM, is telling its doctors to tell other patients that a person who sprays pesticides for occupation will develop brain cancer by the age of six. Uh, the money and the legislation that I found this year, I just completed the audit. We are relying on you to defend Hawaii. This is the last island left. I'm representing the other islands. We are getting hurt. The pediatricians are banding together to defend the children. Don't let that happen here. I have found $200,619 of GMO money from lobbyists and companies in the Senate campaign funds, um, 178000 in the House, and 20900 in the governor's fund. If you add in the two wives and one daughter of the lobbyists, that doubles. So our total is $423,500. So please do the right thing. Thank you. This council's clean. <laughs> okay. So Amara Karuna and Sim Berlin Kane Kaole. Kanaka Ole, Kanaka Ole. I'm sorry, the writing is a little dif difficult for me. Are either one of these people here? I'm putting them aside. I'm going to the next. Oh, oh, here we go. Hold on. Okay, Amara Karuna and I think it's Sim Berlin Kanaka Ole. Have a seat, please. Nicholas Tirapelli. Nicholas Tirapelli? No. Uh, An Andrea Barton? Andrea Barton? Shanti Brown. Shanti Brown, okay. Ms. Kanaka Ole, please go ahead. You've got two minutes. Well, I think everybody said everything. Many Please identify yourself in the microphone. Start our time over. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm Simberlin Kanakole. Um, I represent myself here today. Uh, everybody said enough. I think you guys have all the, all, all the information that you need to make a wise decision. And, you know, if you make a bad choice, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just make a bad choice. What you choose today will affect not just the Hawaiian population, but everyone. We need to save our resources for the future generation, and you're all <coughs> a part of that. As responsible adults, I know you will make the right decision. Don't let money get in the way, please. Thank you. Thank you. Shanti Brown, please identify yourself, and then you may have two minutes. Aloha. My name is Shanti Brown. I support Bill 109. Um, I think we may need to provide support for the papaya industry while we uh, transition to a non-GMO island. Uh, maybe a fund. I don't know what they're going to need, but they're probably going to need help if we do have a complete ban of GMOs. Um, this bill protects genetic diversity by stating our intent to safeguard our island as a seed bank. Uh, monocropping and big egg is destroying the genetic integrity and the nutritional quality of our food. If you're paying any attention to the soy, soil quality um, and the human health in Kauai and Molokai, you know that the damage is being caused by the big corporations there. Um, we need to actively build our soil and they're just not doing it. 
Uh, we also need to protect uh, our people from all the pesticide and herbicide use that is uh, associated with uh, GMO farming. Not necessarily our farmers, but if big farmers come in, big ag, you know you're going to have to protect yourself from that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Next is Judy Haule. I'm not sure if this is English or Hawaiian. Judy Howell? Hool. Hool, okay. Not even close. And Peter Hool, please come on up. And while they're coming forward, Scott, do we have a testifier in Kona? Uh, Madam Chair, we do have one more testifier here in Kona, uh, but she's not ready quite yet. Okay, let me know when she is. Thank you. I will. Chair? Thanks. Yes. Peter has offered to swap with me. Is this the is this the one? Okay, hold on a second. Judy Steinman. Thank you. Okay. So I'm putting uh, Peter back back in the list. Thank you. Um, Judy Hool. Yeah. The red light's on. Go ahead. Uh, please identify yourself by name and then yes, you may Yes, good afternoon, testify. County Council. I am Judy Hool. I've lived and worked in Pune for the last 24 years. I oppose bill number 109 and 113. I oppose any bill that makes a growing a legal and safe crop in the United States illegal on the Big Island of Hawaii. This bill will damage our farmers, our small businesses, and eventually the consumers. We are tropical farmers living on an island and will be at a huge disadvantage without the use of genetic engineering and science. Living on the Big Island, we have additional challenges to combat disease, year-round pests, and have a higher cost of doing business here. If rainbow papaya is banned and we are forced to grow capoa solo, we will require the county to subsidize our losses from the papaya ring spot virus, which will eventually devastate our crops. The small businesses that we do businesses, business with on our island will also be affected when the agricultural industry suffers. The grocery stores will not have the local produce choices and we will have to import more to replace a shortage of produce from commercial farmers. If the farmers are forced to grow conventional, pesticides use will increase and if grown organic, prices will double. If only the Big Island can't grow GMOs and we import 80% of our food with GMO ingredients, eventually the grocery stores will have to import more which do contain GMOs. Neighbors will be encouraged to report on neighbors growing possible GMOs on their private land, allowing the police to enter our private property to arrest you without a warrant. Is this the direction we want to go? Is this aloha? Aloha is supporting your neighbor, coexisting, accepting differences, and celebrating diversity. If there are still questions and concerns, please form an ad hoc committee of qualified experts who can report the facts and debate among themselves to uncover the truth. <laughs> Public testimony is the democratic way, but personal opinions don't always get to the facts. We need to move on to settle this GMO fact from fiction. Please vote no. Thank you. Ms. Steinman? So this is on. Aloha. My name is Judy Steinman. I'm a scientist, PhD in neuroscience, and um, I am he here today to testify as a small farmer, a scientist, and I also do advise Syngenta, which is one of the companies that grows seed on Kauai, on um, primarily um, communication strategies here in Hawaii, because um, it's been clear that the communication has not been that good. I oppose Bill 109 and 113. I consider them both patronizing and ignore the science on GMO. I say mahalo to all of you for tackling this important issue. I know this is a difficult challenge and mahalo you for your hard work. I ask that you create an independent study group, a task force, or an ad hoc committee before imposing a ban that will destroy our island's economy. Study the economic impact on feeding families here on Hawaii Island. Study whether GMO is safe. Study whether rainbow papaya is safe. If you don't, you are burying the economy of this island, destroying our chances for competing with the rest of the state and the country. I asked the seed company representatives individually if they plan to come here, and they said no. 
I consider that rude. There is no evidence of adverse health effects from GMO foods, none. Are countries with GMO bans free of cancer? Are they free of allergies now? No. We have a chance to bring the island together, but these bills do not take advantage of this opportunity. In terms of labeling, there is already a GMO-free label. Assume that everything else has GMO because anything that comes here from any place else has GMO in it. So there are ways that people can know what's safe. So I ask you to consider choice, what will be safe for this island, and let's have a conversation about it. Mahalo. And I'm under time. Thank you. Uh, Kona, please introduce your next testifier. Next testifier is Nancy Redfeather to comment on uh, Bill 109 and 113. Uh, representing Nancy, Nancy Redfeather and Una Greenaway. Go ahead. Can I push this? No, it's right. Um, aloha, good afternoon. So um, I'm Nancy Redfeather. I've been a farmer, organic farmer, in the Mauk area of Kona as a Kavanui for the last 35 years. And I'm speaking today for myself and Una Greenaway, who's also been an organic farmer in Kona for the last 35 years. So um, I, I would like to um, amend Bill 113 and integrate some language from Bill 109 and refine some other language. Um, I have sent in my testimony, so actually uh, I'm not going to read the definition because I think you probably have it. This is a definition that comes from the Center for Food Safety who has done much of the litigation crop by crop in the United States and it is, um, I think we need to have a really clear definition of what genetic engineering is, and I have provided you that definition. Um, the purpose, I think, of this bill is to really come together as an island and realize that we need to protect our non-genetically modified crops in the future. We need to preserve our unique and uh, vulnerable ecosystem, and we need to also um, promote sustainable agriculture practices. Um, that's being called for in the Hawaii County um, rewrite of the agricultural plan. So I think in, in the prohibition section, it should say no open air cultivation, propagation, or development of genetically engineered plants. And there would be two exceptions to that. That would be genetically engineered papayas would be exempt um, in current and future locations with no registration for papaya growers and GE ornamentals grown by the floral industry should also be exempt without re um, without registration. There should be a sunset date sorry, for the Ms. cultivation Redfeather. of genetically engineered corn. Ms. Redfeather, corn. I'm sorry, your time is up. Thank All right, you for your thank testimony. you so much. You're Aloha. Welcome. Next here, Andrea Barton and John Olson. Please come forward.